Welcome to Beer and Iron Slumgullion Recipe. Pure comfort food cooked in a camp cast iron Dutch oven. Y'all, this is an easy one. We're going to saute, sear, and bake a meal of pure comfort food in a 12-inch camp cast iron Dutch oven. We've been known to gather around that pot and eat that awesomeness straight out of that cast iron. Slumgullion may not sound like the most tantalizing name for a pot of comfort food, but that's what gives this pot the come hither. Slumgullion or slum mud. If you want more of this food for yourself, just tell everybody you're cooking a pot of slum mud. But if you're looking to share, maybe answer with American chop suey. If they still look confused, just tell them it's American goulash. They'll get it. We're going to set up our cooking area and get busy creating our slumgullion. Let's cover the ingredients. Two pounds of a leaner ground beef. We're not going to drain our beef. What fat goes in that pot stays in that pot. Bacon. I'm not going to use all this bacon. I'm only going to use a couple of pieces as my cooking oil. We're going to use one or two bell peppers. This bell is a big one. We'll just use the one. One whole onion. You can use less if you prefer. Two to six cloves of garlic. About eight ounces of sliced mushrooms. 12 ounces of frozen peas and carrots. Improvise if you have trouble finding just peas and carrots. 12 ounces of frozen corn. You can use fresh if it's in season. Corn is optional. It will add a bit of sweetness to this recipe. We're not going to use all 16 ounces of this cheese. We're only going to need 1 to 3 cups of shredded cheddar cheese or whatever your favorite cheese is. We're going to use some noodles or pasta in our slumgullion. Elbow noodles are the easiest. Shells or reikiete will be good, but it's more of an advanced option. Shells or reikiete tend to suction cup together, and when two or three are stuck together, they tend to undercook. I like oreikiete. I like to say oreikiete. I'm probably saying oreikiete incorrect, and I'll watch for those that suction cup together when I stir this pot. Two 10 and a half ounce cans of condensed tomato soup. I've tried tomato soup and fire roasted tomatoes. I've even done 50-50. Stick with the condensed tomato soup. Trust me on this one. Two two and a quarter ounce cans of sliced olives. We're going to add the liquid and all. Two 12 ounce or 24 ounces of an easy drinking ale or lager. Something smooth and with a lower IBU. That's International Bitters Unit. Salt. Oh yeah, salt. Finally, though this is not Hungarian goulash, we'll still be using some paprika. I love the way smoked paprika works in this recipe. There is some cutting and chopping to do, so let's get started. First, chop your bell pepper. Chop the onion. Dice the garlic. Keep the bell pepper separate and keep the onion and garlic together. I wait until all of my ingredients are at the ready before lighting my fire. I don't usually use mainstream briquettes, but these match light from Kingsford does what they promise. They light with a match. I use these match light briquettes to start my larger natural wood briquettes. I like to cook with these larger natural wood charcoal briquettes. I'll put a few match light in my charcoal chimney. I'll get the match light started and fired up good. Once the match light briquettes are started, I'll add my hardwood briquettes. Just let them sit there and get started. It doesn't take long. When they really start smoking good, give the briquette chimney a shake. It'll mix the hot and the cool ones up. It'll cut the smoke down. This is a 12-inch regular camp cast iron Dutch oven. It'll hold six quarts. A regular should hold all of the ingredients, but it's going to be close. This is a 12-inch deep camp cast iron Dutch oven. It'll hold eight quarts. And this is the camp Dutch oven we're going to use today. We need a very hot pot. We're going to start off sauteing the onions and the garlic, followed by the beef and then the bell peppers. Start with 24 to 30 or even as many as 40 briquettes. Because I'm using so many, 
I've spread them out in a circle to go around the Dutch oven instead of directly underneath it as I preheat my oven. I don't want a cool oven to be set right down there on that really hot fire. Remember the smaller matchlight briquette and the larger natural wood briquette I had mentioned? Here's a side-by-side -side view of the two to get a perspective. I personally don't have any problem using matchlight or any other mainstream commercial brand, but using the larger briquettes, I don't have to start as many batches. They just last longer. These two were started about the same time, if you remember, with the matchlight having burned just a few minutes longer. Set the Dutch oven over that ring of fire. Now, I bet you got that song in your head, don't you? Once you feel it's warmed up, pull the Dutch oven out of the way and spread out the briquettes. We need a wicked hot camp cast iron Dutch oven. The only meat we're going to prepare is the bacon, but instead of hauling a second meat cutting board out to camp, I sometimes just bring a pair of scissors or kitchen shears to cut my bacon. This bacon will essentially be our cooking oil. You can use a thicker bacon, but the dish will not cook long enough to soften those larger pieces of bacon, and you may find a few chewy pieces of bacon in your bowl. I prefer the thinner bacon to create my cooking oil for this recipe. This is perfect. Add the onions and the garlic at the same time and saute. We could just brown the meat. Instead, I want to sear it like you would a hamburger patty. Make an opening in the onions. Set the meat in the pot but unbroken. Meat does not always come in these squares. Just drop it in in the shape it came in. I'm going to use my meat chopper, not to chop the meat right now. I'm going to spread it out a bit. It's cold today and the steam is flowing nicely. Look at that. Now watch your onions and make sure you don't let them dudes burn. If they're getting overdone, sort of scoop them up and set them on top of the beef. Flip the meat over like a hamburger patty. Now it's time to break up the ground beef and let that meat nearly get done. Once the ground beef is nearly browned, toss in the chopped bell pepper and let them cook just for a moment. You don't have to let the bell pepper cook to done this. It'll cook more in the pot. Now pull the pot from the heat so we don't burn anything while we add the other ingredients. I normally don't measure ingredients over my pot, but a bit more smoked paprika works really well in this recipe. Add two tablespoons of paprika, smoked or plain. Add two teaspoons of salt, but I don't measure salt over the pot. Again, only two teaspoons of salt. Add the package of sliced mushrooms. Add the olives, liquid and all. Add both cans of condensed tomato soup. The corn is optional. It's going to add a bit of sweetness to the dish. Add 12 ounces of corn to the pot if you want to. Add your 12 ounces of peas and carrots. If you find some green beans in that bag, consider removing the green beans. They may not cook all the way. Add two 12 ounce beers or 24 ounces total. A couple of nice easy drinking ales or lagers work great. You can substitute with a beef or chicken broth. I use the beer to wash out the tomato soup cans to get out all that goodness. We're gonna add the pasta. 12 ounces works a bit easier than adding all 16 ounces. If you use all 16 ounces, you may need to add liquid later in the cook to get them to finish cooking. If you only use 12 ounces of pasta, you may end up with a soupier slumgullion, but it'll be easier to cook. I used all 16 ounces. Don't add the cheese yet. Hang on. If you shred your cheese too soon and you're anything like me, you'll just end up snacking on it. Stir it all in real well. Blend it together real well. Then you're going to smooth out the top of the ingredients to make sure all the pasta's little heads are down below the liquid line. At first, it may look like you don't have enough liquid. It's okay for now. We'll have an opportunity to add more beer, broth, or water later. Let's get our pot back on the fire. 
put the lid back on your Dutch oven. We have a mess of burning briquettes there, and some have burned down quite a bit. We have a 12-inch camp cast iron Dutch oven. We're going to be baking this pot of slumgullion, and we need 24 total briquettes, or the equivalent of 24 briquettes. That's important. Place two-thirds, 17 to 19, on the top of that Dutch oven. Choose your best briquettes for the top. We need about seven or nine briquettes underneath the Dutch oven. If my briquettes are burned down, I'll often double or triple them and count them as one briquette. It's not really windy today, but it's cooler out. I'm going to use my windscreen to cover my Dutch oven. You want to know how I made this windscreen? Well, there's a link in the description. The daylight here in the late fall in Idaho's northern panhandle is pretty short. I'm actually preparing my supper, but it's still morning time for me. So how about a nice hot cup of espresso? If you're enjoying this video thus far, consider giving us a thumbs up, selecting that subscribe button, and then giving a bit of a ding-a-ling-a-ling -a -a on that dinner bell. Initially, with this recipe, I'm going to let it go for about 15 to 20 minutes to get everything heated up. Then I'll do the first turn. For this recipe, turning the pot is optional. We're about to remove the lid and stir the ingredients. But I usually turn the lid one-third of a turn in one direction, and then I turn the whole pot one-third of a turn in the other direction. Old habits, I guess. Then remove the lid to a nearby lid stand and give the ingredients a good mixing. We're looking to cycle the pasta to make sure it cooks evenly. Watch for the pieces that are stuck together. Return the lid and let it cook for another 15 minutes. I take this opportunity to clean up a bit and toss my cooking scraps in the trash. After another 15 minutes, give the ingredients another mixing. Stir everything up real well and pay attention to those noodles. I keep calling them noodles. Maybe I should stick with pasta. Pasta. That sounds more delicious than noodles, right? I'll just call them whatever. Those briquettes have been burning since we initially started sautéing. Well, let's take a gander at them and see if we need to add some fresh ones. You know, even those bigger ones are looking sort of tired and spent. I'm going to remove some of the top briquettes and move them to the bottom. I think of them as a half briquette or a third briquette and I count them accordingly. Then I add some nice, fresh briquettes to the top of the pot. Just use your good judgment. Think 8 for the bottom and 16 for the top. As you cook meals that take longer to cook, you'll be making guesses as to doubling and tripling the smaller briquettes to equal your 8 and 16. But don't overthink it. We've stirred this pot twice thus far. We're getting close and I figure I better get my fajita skillet hot and ready for a nice bit of that samgullion. Let's go ahead and shred the cheese. Get one to three cups of shredded cheese at the ready. It's been cold out and there's really no bugs outside, thank goodness. But I'm still going to cover the cheese. Why? I don't know. I just do. We'll stir more often as we get closer. There's less liquid in that pot and we want to keep the ingredients moving. We want the noodles and pasta to cook evenly. At this third stirring, check the pasta. The pasta is the telltale. When the pasta is done, the dish is done. Except for the cheese, of course. Just keep stirring every five to seven minutes at this point. It's likely all cooked by the third stirring. Add liquid, beer or broth or water even, as needed. Before you add the cheese, make sure the pasta is done. There's no more stirring once you add the cheese. Lay the cheese on top of the ingredients. Cover the pot back and let that cheese melt. While that cheese is melting, it's time for a beer. This 1554 from New Belgium is pretty okie dokie. Bigfoot, cliche I know, but cool nonetheless. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see what's what. Doggone, that looks good. Put that on your head and your tongue is liable to beat your brains out trying to get to it. 
I'm going to get some of that awesomeness out and put it on my plate and start chowing down. Let's set that pot nearby and close just in case we want some seconds. Gonna say a bit of blessing. And oh yeah, I'm liable to wear most of this food. Let me get a bit of a tissue here. Orange, I know. Well, it's hunting season up here. And this chow is pretty good stuff, I tell you what. You never know. Cheers, y'all. That's some good eating right there, I tell you what. Now here's a bit of a pro tip. When you're all done cooking, remove all the briquettes from the top of that Dutch oven. Make sure all the briquettes are off the top of that Dutch oven. We're packing our leftovers home right there in that pot. Even a small remaining hot briquette will cause a good day to become a very bad day, either in the car on the way home or if left out in the forest. Use a straw hand brush to get the ash off and any hidden briquettes. But Soule, that straw brush may catch fire if there are any briquettes left on that pot. Yep, and that's a good thing. One, I know I missed a briquette. And two, a plastic one would just melt on top of my pot or melt to something else. I'm about to leave camp. And before I do, I dump all the hot stuff and then I douse it with the water I packed in. And the risk of reading about a forest fire and the authorities out searching for an ugly fella cooking with cast iron wearing an orange bib while he ate his meal are slim to none. Y'all, I don't think I'd ever be able to cook again out in the woods if I burned them down. I make sure that fire is done. I've got a full belly, and I figured I'd go out to get a bit of photography. If you've enjoyed this recipe, Slumgullion, pure comfort food cooked in a camp cast iron Dutch oven, consider giving good old Soule a thumbs up, clicking on that subscribe button, and giving a bit of a ding dong on that dinner bell. You keep on cooking in those cast iron beauties and enjoying those frosted glasses of that fermented barley pop. We're going to see each and every one of you back soon. Be sure to visit BeerAndIron.com for the printable recipe. Cheers, y'all.